Imagine for a moment that you're walking down a street in an unknown city. You stumble upon a cemetery and see this headstone. Based on its appearance and the form of the letters, where would you say that this cemetery is located? These are Hebrew letters, so you might guess this cemetery is on the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. But what about this one? The markings here appear to be Cyrillic, so you might guess Russia, or perhaps Bulgaria. And this one? This is a German inscription, so maybe this city lies in Austria, or even Switzerland. All these headstones come from the Jewish cemetery in Chernowitz, a city now located in western Ukraine. This is the story of the only remains left of a once thriving Jewish community that flourished here for 200 years, the Chernowitz Jewish Cemetery. Chernowitz, throughout the medieval period, was governed by Moldavian warlords, but the territory was eventually lost to the Ottoman Turks. Everything would change for Chernowitz in 1774. That date marks the end of the Russo-Turkish War, when Chernowitz was ceded to the Habsburg Empire. At that time, there was no clear ethnic majority in the city. Rather, the population was a mix of Romanians, Poles, Ukrainians, Germans, and Jews. Many of the Jews living in Chernowitz in the 18th century under Ottoman rule were Sephardim, tracing their lineage back to those Jews expelled from Spain in the 15th century. Because Joseph II, the Habsburg monarch and Holy Roman Emperor, wanted his new territorial acquisition to be more closely associated with Europe rather than with the East, he would encourage migration from Swabia, a region of southern Germany lying on the Danube River. To accomplish this, Joseph II appointed Karl Freiherr von Enzenberg as chief of the newly minted military district. Von Enzenberg, an avowed anti-Semite, encouraged the movement of Jews out of Austria to Chernowitz. We might surmise that life here was not easy for the Jewish community, initially, as von Enzenberg himself wrote of the community, quote, The Jews control all trade, commerce, and industry, even in the three cities of Siret, Suciava, and Chernovitsi, and in the other cities, selling wine, beer, spirits, and vodka to the taverns, in many villages they are the tenants of the regional property, and as a result, what is terrible is, the Christians are their subjects. This migration would only increase with time after Joseph II issued his Edict of Tolerance in 1782. This edict did not make the Jews full citizens, but did increase their legal rights and provided more educational and economic opportunity. As the edict says, quote, We permit and command the tolerated Jews, in places where they have no German schools of their own, to send their children to the Christian upper elementary schools, so that they shall learn at least reading, writing, and arithmetic. And although they have no synagogue of their own in our capital, we yet permit them to build for their children, at their own expense, a normally equipped school with a teaching staff of their own religion, which shall be subject to the same control as all the German schools here. The composition of the moral books being left to them. Because of this tolerant environment, the Jews of Chernowitz flourished in the 19th century. Jews could now work as shoemakers, plumbers, bakers, barbers, coppersmiths, locksmiths, tinkers, glaziers, tailors, brass foundrymen, gold and silversmiths, blanket makers, wallpaper hangers, saddlers, bridal makers, musicians, room and sign painters, stove fitters, that is, all the trades that were mostly practiced by Jews. But the Jews of Chernowitz were not only merchants. In the second half of the 19th century, they were not only actively involved in the trades and commerce, 
They also dominated the legal and medical professions, maintaining many newspapers and controlling banks, as well as being active in Austro-Hungarian political life. In fact, many Jews fought in the Austro-Hungarian army during World War I. The community even built a Jewish hospital in 1853, as well as a central synagogue in the same year, and in the early 20th century, construction on Das Jüdische Haus, a Baroque Revival-style building which served as a central meeting place for the celebration of Jewish culture, was finished. Chernowitz would also serve as a major focus of the burgeoning Hasidic movement sweeping the area. The Hasidic movement began about 100 kilometers, or 60 miles away, in Yaslovitz, founded by Rabbi Yisrael ben Eliezer, also known as the Baal Shem Tov. Chernowitz would become the seat of one branch of the Sadigura Hasidim, led by Rabbi Sholom Yosef of Chernowitz. The city would also host the Conference of the Yiddish Language, also known as the Chernowitz Conference, which established Yiddish as a standardized modern language. With the city serving as a center of Jewish learning of all stripes, it should come as no surprise that it flourished along with the community. By the late 19th century, German had become the lingua franca of Chernowitz, and a German language university was founded in the city to cement its position as a center for study. Franz Josef University primarily offered instruction in German, but also maintained professorships in Romanian and Ruthenian languages as well. Most of the students in attendance were Jews, with only 20 to 25 percent of the students being Ukrainian or Romanian. This university is still in operation today under the name Yuri Fedkovich Chernovitsi National University. The good times wouldn't last forever, though. After World War I, Chernowitz was ceded to the Kingdom of Romania. For a time after, there were many residents of the city who did not know the status of their citizenship, still believing themselves to be a part of the now defunct Austro-Hungarian Empire. With the outbreak of World War II, the city was occupied for a year by the Red Army, until it was reconquered by the Romanians. The Romanian dictator at the time, Ion Antonescu, ordered the construction of a Jewish ghetto, cramming 50,000 residents into it, before deporting half of the Jewish population to Transnistria. But not all Romanians were complicit in the destruction of the Jewish community. Largely through the actions of the city's Romanian mayor, Trajan Popovici, about 20,000 were spared. Most of the deported did not survive the war. When the Soviets took back the city, Chernowitz once again became a destination for Jewish immigration, this time from within the Soviet Union, and mostly from the Ukraine. Starting in the 1970s, and accelerating with the collapse of the Soviet Union, came the virtual disappearance of the Jewish population of Chernowitz. Most of the population would leave for Israel, the United States, and other parts of the Western world. With the disappearance of the Jewish community, the Jewish cemetery of Chernowitz fell into a state of disrepair. The Chernowitz Jewish Cemetery Restoration Organization, created in 2009, with the help of the Chernowitz Chabad Jewish community, seeks to rectify this situation by taking care of and maintaining for future generations the Chernowitz Jewish Cemetery, the only remaining large-scale proof of what was once the vibrant Chernowitz Jewish community. We invite you to learn more about the contribution that this international group of people has made towards preserving what is left of Jewish Chernowitz, and to help keep their memory alive through your continued interest. If you'd like to learn more and help our cause, please visit our website at cjcro.org. Additionally, if you enjoy learning about world history, consider subscribing to the Panorao podcast. You can find it wherever good podcasts are streamed, as well as at panorao.com. I'm Matt Lupu. Thanks for listening.